Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Flood Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at paper choices for the Canon Pro 200. Now, I've covered quite a lot of stuff on the Pro 200. I've got videos about different aspects of it, including papers and things, but it's something I regularly get asked about. In particular, what sorts of papers are particularly good, and if there are any papers that are particularly bad. Now, usually this comes in the context of people wondering what printer to get, and it's about the type of ink, as much as anything about the printer itself. Now, I've also looked at the Canon Pro 300, which is a physically very similar printer, which uses pigment inks. So, coming back to this question of, uh, of the papers, what really makes a difference? Well, it's the inks. Uh, both use similar technology for putting the ink on the paper, uh, but it's just how the inks interact with the paper. And you have to realize that with this printer, it is dye inks. Well, what about dye inks? One of the questions I get asked about is, are they a problem for print longevity? I'm going to say no, because nobody genuinely cares about that. If you do genuinely care about it, or you're using it for marketing purposes, you'll use pigment-based inks. Does that mean that these are likely to fade? No. If you use Canon inks, and the Chroma Life 100 Plus inks in this are pretty good, if you use these on good paper, then prints are as likely, if they're kept well and not exposed to bright sunlight, they're as likely to outlast you. and They will last for years. If you want to use cheap inks and cheap paper, then they may fade within six months. But that's your fault for being cheap. Um, I get asked all the time about third-party inks, wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. They mean I'd come, all my printer profiles would be broken just for starters. But you know, some people do see it as an option. I personally wouldn't go there. Certainly, when I review things and look at stuff, I only ever look at the, uh, the original inks because those are the inks that the printer's been designed with. But I say longevity, not a real problem. The, the problem with longevity is more akin to the fact you've probably been reading too many printer forums where people wonder about such things and go into the details of print lifetime and stuff. If that concerns you, great. For most people, it's an utter irrelevance. Black and white. Now, this is another area. Now, I've printed some black and white prints, and here's an example print. Um, I used them. This is on a cotton rag paper. In this particular print, I used the black and white print mode. Now on this paper, it works well. And in this light, it looks a good neutral black and white. The problem with dye-based inks is connected with the black. It's about how black the black is at different colors. And dye-based inks, I've, I've written an article about this if you want to go into the real details of why it happens with graphs and things like that, but essentially, in deep red light, the black is not as black as it is at other colors. And that means the overall look of the print can vary depending on the lighting. Now, at the moment, we've got LED lighting in here. I've got some daylight being reflected off a wall over in the distance. So it's a mixed lighting. And this print, it looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to say if black and white is really your thing, then go for pigment inks. Makes it a lot easier. Um, for this, um, I've used the black and white print mode. Sometimes I have found that using a profile helps, but I said, I've, I've got lots of stuff covering black and white on this, but it is an area where if you're, if you're concerned about black and white quality, that may well make a difference. What about color? Is there any areas where color is particularly good, particularly bad? Well, I have to say, with this particular printer, uh, and these prints did impress me, this is an ultra-glossy metallic paper, and it does have a metallic sheen to it. And with the dye-based inks, it's probably very difficult to show on the video. But um, the quality of the images, the prints I'm getting off this, particularly where they're lit subjects, I would actually, if I had this printer and a uh, pigment ink printer, because I, I use pigment ink for my own work, and I wanted to produce some really brilliant standout prints, add up to A3 plus size here, I would use these dye inks on this paper. So for ultra glossy paper, the dyes really do have an edge. Now, it turns out that the dyes tend to, the dye inks, 
tend to excel in the brighter colors and the pigment inks tend to excel in the darker colors. On this particular paper though, they just work superb on this. Now, on an ordinary photo paper like this, the results are good. They're not necessarily as good as some pigment inks. And I'm talking luster papers. When I get to brighter papers, I found that some brighter papers definitely seem designed for use with pigment inks. They perform better and there's a bit of a dip. Now, I can't say all brighter papers are bad. I can't say which ones are good or bad, because it will depend around the world where you are and what it is. But just bear in mind, if you like brighter style papers, that's heavy semi-glass luster type papers, typically you know, with a, a particular look to them, hence the name brighter. If you like those, take care, and it is about the availability of profiles. Unless you're doing your own profiling, you really do need profiles to get the best out of these papers. What about other media? Well, canvas, it prints perfectly well. Here we go, here's a canvas print done on a matte canvas. Now, it's a matte canvas, so you may well want to spray it with, to get a bit more of surface intensity off it, of color intensity. Uh, it does take varnish well. The inks work well on the canvas. This is a sheet canvas. I've got a video looking at canvas printing on this printer, so it covered that. Here's a watercolor paper. Uh, once again, fairly washed out colors, very light tones here. Um, works very well. I found that some heavy art papers work really well. Others don't quite have the depth. It really depends on the way the paper is made. So once again, it's something to experiment with. But and I warned in, a, in another video I made recently about getting sample packs. Do not, when you get a printer like this, please don't rush out and get masses of sample packs and just try bits of paper. Wait until you've got some experience using the printer so you can actually judge whether one's better than the other or whether it's just your own incompetence in not being able to print properly. Uh, goes for me as well. I can be utterly incompetent on occasions. Um, that's why I print lots of test images and things like this when I get a new printer to test. Now, I've got black and white versions, I've got color versions of these. Take your time. But anyway, if I had to say one thing about this printer, which is a very nice printer, I'd say is that it really does benefit from proper testing. Take your time. Don't rush out and try things. If somebody says a particular paper is very good, find some context for that. Were they even reply, applying to the actual printer that you're using. But anyway, there you go. That's the gist of it. Because I, I get asked an awful lot about, uh, about, should I buy this? Should I buy that? Now, I never make recommendations, but I'm happy to answer questions and the like. So please do feel free to ask questions on the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, seems to be doing quite well. Uh, so I appreciate that. And uh, thank you very much.